Hello, I'm JW. This time in the garden again, we're going to be testing the earth rod. This time we're going to use the method that doesn't require any mains power. That's going to be using either three connections or two connections. And we've seen the test leads for this in the previous video. It's those very long ones with the green, yellow and red wires. Now, if this was real installation, the first thing we'd have to do is to disconnect the power and lock that off and then remove the earth connection from the earth rod and that would obviously ensure that we're only measuring the electrode in the ground and not the main bonding and anything else that's in there. And in this particular case though, of course, we're not doing that because this is just a demonstration. The electrode we've got on the ground here isn't actually connected, so that's uh, not going to be done here, but in a real installation you would need to do that. And you would need to uh, disconnect the power first because, of course, if you're going to disconnect the earth, that would leave it in a dangerous condition. So let's have a quick look at the uh, rod in the ground. We've seen that last time and then the test leads that we're going to be using. So here's the leads we're going to be using. We've got three here, green, red and yellow. Now the green one is what connects to the electrode we're actually going to be testing. This is relatively short. I was going to be placing the test meter near to that. The red one is what goes furthest away, hence it's the longest one there. And that's going to be going way down the end of the garden. And then the yellow one is what goes between those two. And we're going to start out with that approximately halfway between the two. And then we're going to do some additional tests as well by moving this one direction and the other to get a sample of various different readings and ideally we should be getting those all around the same kind of area if not then we'll have to move the red one and try again so three things there and they go in the order say red furthest away yellow nearest and green to the electrode itself So here's the red one, I've just placed that uh, pretty much as far as we can get at the end of the garden here. This is basically the back of the fence there, so it can't really go much further than that. So the uh, temporary lead just uh, clips on there and then that uh, spike just presses into the ground. The ground is very wet here, it's been raining for weeks, so no problem with that. And the uh, wire there we have just goes all the way down the garden, as we just saw. And the yellow one I've placed about halfway along, so it just placed here in the lawn. So same deal again, just press it in the ground and then the yellow lead clips on to the side there. And that's roughly halfway between the electro we're testing and the red one we just placed in up there. And then those leads come down to here. And then in the box here we've got the electro which we saw in the previous episode. Now let's have a look inside, there it is and just connected the green clip onto that one. And again, there's nothing else connected to this because if there was, we'd actually be testing that as well. So if this did connect back to, say, the installation, we'd end up testing things like the main bonding via the gas, water, and everything else as well. So uh, that just goes in there. And then we've got our three leads here ready to connect up to the test instrument. So we've got our three leads here, red, yellow, and green. And these just go in on the back here in the appropriate places. And it says it's these... Uh, smaller indications here for the colour. So the green one, which is the electrode we're actually testing, goes into the green where the X is located, so I'll just press inside there. The red one, which is far away, goes into the number marked C, and that's actually the current stake. And essentially what that's doing is putting a current in between this one and this one. And then the yellow one, which is the one we're going to move about shortly, is the potential one, or P there, and that's basically measuring the voltage at that point. Basically, it's measuring the uh, sort of voltage gradient across the ground and calculating resistance from that. So that goes into the uh, yellow one there. So let's make sure those are installed properly. Let's place this here. And then the function we're going to select here is the earth testing function, which in this case is the 
two or three pole test. This is three pole because we've got three connected there. And then it's just turning it around to the RE position here. And uh, let's do a quick check there to see what we've got. And then we're ready to do the test. And just do the test pressing the uh, button, obviously. Okay, so there's our test result there, so 105 ohms. So that's fairly within the range that we had on the test we did previously. Did that loop impedance in the house, it came out in the sort of range of about 100 ohms or so. And I bring around that was uh, actually a couple of weeks ago because uh, these videos are not being recorded at the same time. And also what we did before was measuring the actual loop impedance. So that would have included the cabling from the house here and back to the transformer and whatever. So it would have been uh, slightly different. However, the uh, cabling and whatever else is tiny resistance compared to this because obviously cabling can have resistance in the region of less than 1 ohm. So 105 is what we're getting as a result here. Now that's only one reading. We do need to do several of these. So what we're going to do now is to move the yellow spike, which we've got in the lawn. We're actually going to move it uh, towards the red one. And we're going to do the test again. And then we're going to move it back this way towards the electrode we're testing. And again, do the test again as well. Uh, it's important to do this to get a uh, sample of readings. They should all be around the same kind of value. And obviously if they're not, that would indicate some kind of problem with the uh, temporary electrodes we've put in. So let's just move that and then we'll have another go. So what I'm just doing here is moving the yellow stake there further away and basically going closer towards the red one, which stays up there at the end of the garden where that trampoline is installed. So now we've got that in position there, we're going to do the same test again and see if we get anything different. And so it should be similar, but of course uh, you never know, so let's have a look. So it's still on 105 we had previously, so uh, let's just do that test uh, again there. Again, it takes a while to uh, do the business. So. Okay, so this time I've got 106, so again, pretty similar to what we had before. It's less than 1% uh, change there, so that seems fine. And now what we're going to do is to uh, relocate the yellow spike, but move it closer this way, and again, do that test a third time. So, so I'm just moving this pipe then from far away and putting it back into the lawn there, but this time quite a bit closer than we had before, so uh, nearer to the actual electrode we're going to be testing. And once again, we're just going to test the uh, thing again, see what result we get. So that's the 106 we had uh, from the previous test, so yeah, we'll just uh, start that going again. Okay, so this time we're getting 101, so that's a bit lower there, but again, it's well within the range that we would expect. So uh, just a few ohms less there. So in this case, we can uh, reasonably assume that the impedance of this electrode is in the region of 105 or so, and uh, that's uh, very consistent with what we had on the previous test as well. We did the loop impedance test. Now those results we had were fairly consistent, so all around the sort of 100 to 110 range, so can safely say that this particular electrode is in the region of 105. Again, that's consistent with what I had before. Now, if you get results that are massively different, so say we've got 100 on one, and then we suddenly got sort of 180 or something, and then we've got one that was 74 or something like that, that would indicate that there's a problem with the temporary electrodes that you're actually putting in, and that can happen if the soil is very dry, or if the uh, soil varies a lot between the way you're putting them in. So if there was, say, a sort of wet, soggy patch in a flower bed, and then there was a dusty, dry bit of lawn or something, now, if that does happen, what you can do is to uh, actually apply water to the ground where you're putting the temporary electrodes in. And you can do that for both of those, and that should uh, give you more consistent results. The important thing to do is not to apply water or anything else to the actual electrode you're testing, because, of course, that will give unrealistic results. So, perfectly OK to apply water or whatever where you're putting the temporary spikes in, but definitely not where the permanent electrode is installed, because, obviously, if it is dry outside already, you want to be measuring it in that condition so you can see what it's actually going to measure of. So if it's, say, measured very high, you could shove water on it, and yes, it would probably give a lower result. But of course, as soon as you've driven away in the van and whatever, a couple of hours later, it's going to have dried out and gone back to the uh, far too high reading. But say in this garden, it's very wet anyhow, so uh, not a problem with this. Now, what we saw there, of course, was doing the test in the real world. And there is a couple of books here which contain the details of doing this. First one of which 
is the on-site guide here. This is the 18th edition one. I'll see. Just get the most up-to-date version applicable at the time that you're doing it. And then the other book here is Guidance Note 3, or GN3 as it's often abbreviated to. Again, this is the 18th edition one that uh, again, they are updated as the new editions are published. Now the on-site guide version, it's uh, basically section 10 here, with guidance on initial testing installations. And this particular edition it's uh, on page 112. And uh, this basically goes through what we've uh, previously seen here. And we've also got this uh, illustration here, which is basically showing what we uh, saw previously. And uh, this says a more uh, abbreviated version of this, but does cover the basics in there. Now we'll have a look at the uh, Guidance Note 3 version because there's a bit more information in that one. And this actually has the exact same diagram that we've got here. So uh, let's just have a look at that one. So here's Guidance Note 3. And this particular one, it's uh, Earth Electrode Resistance Testing, which uh, happens to be on page 60. So here is page 60, and we see it's that same uh, exact diagram again. So again, no surprise there. So as we see here, it's got the uh, description here, Earth Electrode Resistance Testing. And I've got three methods of measuring the resistance are described in this section. And uh, the one we're going to look at here is, of course, the one with the dedicated earth electrode tester. And you can get various types as uh, described here. And the uh, section here is pretty much uh, what we just did outside in the garden there. And uh, as we said there, for safety reasons, it's essential to ensure that the installation is securely isolated from the supply. And it's also necessary to disconnect the earth inductor from the earth electrode uh, or the main earth terminal. And again, caution here, this is the only earth electrode, which it usually would be, and certainly a small installation. This may leave the installation unprotected against earth faults, and complete isolation of the installation must be made. So very important there that if you're going to be disconnecting the electrode, you need to make sure that the installation is isolated and locked off. So ideally the test should be carried out when the ground conditions are least favourable, such as when the soil is frozen or very dry. Now of course the one we just did there in the garden was the exact opposite of this. It was done in the winter when the soil was actually soaking wet. So uh, not ideal from that point of view, but uh, that just has to be the time we were there. And of course, uh, if you're at a particular site or whatever, you can't realistically just leave the installation turned off for six months and come back in the summer. So uh, although it's ideally done when the ground conditions least favourable, in reality that may not be possible, but uh, certainly it may be uh, desirable to return at a later date and uh, do further tests to confirm that it still remains within the values you've got. And the actual uh, process here is pretty much what we saw in the garden there. So we've got the tester instrument here. The electrode we're actually testing is uh, the one here that's got the green uh, lead connected to that. And then we have two temporary electrodes here. So we've got our C2 here, which is the red lead. That was the extremely long one, which is the uh, current stake. And then the middle sort of length one there, which is the P here, or P2 they've marked, which is the uh, potential stake. And it gives some suggested distances here, so we're looking at sort of 15 to 25 metres between the two spikes here, and therefore in sort of a range of 30 to 50 metres between the two. Now in the garden we had there, it's actually about 28 metres between the two, that just happens to be the length of that particular garden, and then in the middle, obviously part way through, and we did move it sort of a few metres in either direction. And again, these are only uh, guidance information, again you've got to use what you've got, so Say so in the case of the garden there, we come as pretty much as far as we could. So the distance between the spikes is important. If they're too close together, their resistance areas will overlap. General uh, reliable results may be expected if the distance between the electrode under test and the current spike, C2, is at least 10 times the maximum dimension of the electrode system. So say 30 metres for a 3 metre long rod electrode. Now, the one we were actually testing there was only up to 1.2 metres long. So uh, again, the distance we had there would be perfectly fine. And then the three readings, which again what we did in the garden there. So first is the potential spike midway between the electrode and the current spike. So that was the first one. And then you've got the two additional there. Secondly, with it moved to position 10% towards the electrode and test, and again towards the uh, current spike as well. I just did those in the reverse order there, but uh, obviously it doesn't particularly matter as long as you do all three. And then it's essentially uh, finding out the sort of average between those to get something uh, in sort of a reasonable reading. And again, they should all be pretty much within the same kind of area. There will be some variation, but you wouldn't expect to see huge variations like sort of 100 ohms in one position and 600 ohms somewhere else. And then the uh, final point there is that uh, where the resistance of the temporary spikes is too high, measures to reduce the resistance will be necessary, such as driving the spikes deeper in the ground, or watering with brine, or basically salt water, to improve the contact resistance. So uh, 
in the particular test we did in the garden there that wasn't necessary because the ground was very wet but it is fine to apply say water or stock water to the temporary electrodes so they have a better contact with the ground and as involved here no circumstances should the latter technique be used to temporarily reduce the resistance of the earth electrode under test so do not pour water or anything else on the electrode you're testing because of course that will affect the resistance of it and of course it's going to give completely unrealistic readings because pouring water on it is all very well but that uh, water is going to uh, dry out and disappear and of course uh, after a few days or even hours or whatever then it's going to be uh, back to where you started and the final point then of course is on completion of the test ensure the earthing conductor is reconnected before the installation is energized or re-energized so very important to do that because otherwise you're leaving it with no earth connection now there's a couple of other methods you can use which that uh, mega instrument can do but uh, it does require some additional accessories which we don't currently have and uh, one of them is to use a test clamp here which is basically a clamp meter device there connected to the test instrument and as we show here it's a similar kind of setup with the two temporary electrodes there a similar sort of distances there electrode under test here the only difference here is you're putting an actual clamp here with a test coil on this one the only benefit of this is that you can actually leave the connection to the installation on there so you don't have to actually disconnect the installation and then disconnect the main earthing terminal so that would be more convenient if you didn't want to actually disconnect or turn off the installation and by doing that it's using the call there to only measure this particular electrode and not what's sort of upstream of the connection here so that can be useful in some circumstances although say, the only benefit really is to avoid having to isolate the electrode from the electrical installation and then the other method here which again that mega device can do this actually requires two coils here or two clamps essentially and again this can be used when it's still connected to the rest of the installation you don't need any temporary electrodes in that particular case all you're doing is placing the two clamps around the conductor connected to the electrode you're testing and all it's doing is applying an AC voltage here and then the current coil is measuring the current that flows and of course from the two there it can calculate the uh, resistance of the electrode you're using here and although you've got uh, others connected here this is just a whole set of electrodes connected to the common point because it can determine which way the current is flowing you can then measure only what's going in here and not the others so again that's quite a useful one if you don't want to have to disconnect wires or whatever it's just clamping the two around it and pressing the test button but again it doesn't need those two additional clamps there which uh, are optional items and in the case of the mega one cost several hundred pounds each now the only other thing to mention here is that that mega and no doubt other devices as well do have the two pole measurement method where essentially you're using the same three leads there the green red and yellow the only difference is you've got the green one connected to the electrode you're testing and then both the red and yellow leads connect to a single temporary electrode and then uh, you can just measure the uh, resistance that way now that mega does uh, have that function and it's actually the same setting on the front it's the uh, 3p and the 2p there on the front are in the same place but uh, having actually tried that and uh, it doesn't actually appear to be particularly successful in the garden there where we actually tested it it came out of the resistance being something like 1.5k ohms which clearly is a load of nonsense so uh, though it claims to do that the results we got in the garden there were certainly uh, way off the mark and not particularly usable and again the only advantage of that is just having a single temporary electrode rather than two of them of course in reality the difference between that and having two is pretty minimal so uh, that's uh, pretty much earth electrode testing and i say it can be quite more involved there because in that case we only need three measurements but if you find they're sort of varying all over the place then of course you may have to do four or five or even more tests and trying moving those temporary electrodes around to the most appropriate places so that's it for this episode. Until next time, thanks for watching.